Hey everyone, William Cho here, and we're here with the VCT Pacific Preview Show, where we're going to be able to talk about all the teams, what we saw at lock-in, and what we're looking forward to for the rest of the year. I have two of my best friends, right? At least in Valorant, yeah, yeah not in the whole world. Yeah, we'll give yeah, it that. Yeah, we, we got <laughs> Seth and Clinton over here. You guys want to do a quick intro for the fans? Hello, I'm Achilles. That's it. That's all I got. You are Achilles. That is true. I am paper thin, I think. I hope. Okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, Locken just finished. You were there in Brazil. Let's let's hear your side first, because obviously we got to watch the games from home. I mean, Sao okay. Paulo, gorgeous. Uh, first time in Brazil, so that was a, a completely new experience for me, but a very grueling tournament for all yeah. of the casters, for the teams and whatnot. I mean, going through 32 teams was a pretty wild experience, but it was uh, kind of like a once in a lifetime thing, so yeah. it was great. Um, I know you watched a lot of it. You were doing a couple co-streams as well for the DRX games. What'd you think of the overall kind of results and the gameplay? I think it was really good. I mean, it's really exciting to get to see like some of these teams who have been trying to put to put it together on like a short amount of time yeah. uh, to see what they're able to bring, to see some kind of, you know, teams that maybe overperformed versus what some of the expectations were, some that underperformed, those kind of things. So it, it's a good way to kind of kick off this whole season, this whole year. Yeah, I think there there's a lot of surprises as far as like teams that we had kind of expected to be a bit weaker. I mean, yes. especially for Pacific, just because you know there's a lot of new faces and whatnot coming out from Pacific that really performed well beyond our expectations. So now the expectations are high, and uh, hopefully the teams can cope with this much tension that they're going to have going into yeah. this league. Yeah, I think there's a lot more interest now in how do these teams perform? Who's actually going to Masters? Let's talk about this. One of the teams I really want to talk about was Talent, right? They they had that core, so everyone knew they were pretty good, but we weren't really sure what to expect coming into. VC. Pacific with maybe a couple of these player changes and and also role changes that we saw coming into lock in. Some people are saying like they could be top two. I mean, yeah, through the through the roof right now. Talon looked super clean and I mean very much challenged DRX in that alpha bracket when they yes. finally got down to that last semifinal. So, uh, wasn't sure what to anticipate. They looked okay in the off season, but with the the pickups of Jip Boys and Garnets, like they just completely fell into their roles and looked super comfortable. So I'm fully anticipating that they very well could be the second place team, if not challenging DRX, because they've already done it Ooh. once with a little bit more time, with more practice scrimming around, uh, you know, against all the other teams in Pacific, as well as, you know, the teams that are gonna be in challengers from multiple regions. I think that there's a lot more growth that can be there for this team. One, maybe, you know, kind of questionable thing that a lot of people are beating around the bush about is Patty Fan. where does he fit in? Do, do you think they look, could look stronger with Patty Fan, or maybe do they have the answer with Garnett's? I could see if he, if his risk gets to the point where it's recovered enough that he could play, maybe he's going to play on you know very jet specific maps, and then you flip Garnets in for maps like Fracture, like you know Lotus and whatnot, where you really want to have that race split as well. I could mm. see that kind of being a bit of a rotation, but it really will come down to how much that adjusts the play style of the rest of the team. Right, so let's just jump all over the place, all right? Sold them and Detonation focused me. So I got to cast their games on the Korean side this time around. And I'll be honest, I you know, they they underperformed. They were a team that underperformed compared to what I thought their roster looked like. The pieces just didn't seem to come together to a whole puzzle. I think it was very clearly not the players playing at their at their peak. To my sure. knowledge, it's also the first time that they've been able to play together as a full five on stage. Yeah, because Suggest, suggest was, come, yeah. Suggest oh, yeah, was you're right. So this is the first time they had everybody on stage, but yeah. that was not the, the level of play that we anticipate from those players. It's a little bit similar to like Team Liquid on the opposite side, you know, for EMEA. Like there's clearly talent on this roster. I just think that it, it takes a, it's gonna take a little bit more time to have it really all come together. So I'm hopeful that they'll be able to improve before the start of the, the league. Okay, let's let's have you guys pick one of the teams that you want to talk about the most that's not DRX. <laughs> Oh. I'll let you go. Bro. Damn, that was You're my like, whole list. Yeah, no. I was just like, I was only going to talk about that. That's all I want to talk about. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think, I mean, just because we're kind of on the, on the topic of DFM, it's a team that needs to find their identity and really find their groove and whatnot. I think one of the other ones that's kind of like that in the league is going to be RRQ. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so, this went yeah, a different direction than I thought. Yeah, another team that, you know, unfortunately did go out in the first round. Yes. They weren't able to get their win. But I know that the team is, is taking a very good approach about how they're supporting this, this roster. They're giving them great mm -hmm. facilities and whatnot to, to practice in. And they're also not setting, like, the highest of expectations on these players because while they do have those veterans in Tevatol and Flipshider, they also have these three new players so they're not going out the gate and saying like you guys have to hit first you know we got to be a dominant force and saying like <laughs> you know what like this is going to be a longer term project sure. and whatnot we are going to be building up these players to become a very scary team within mm -hmm. the region so I, I like the approach they're putting as little weight on the shoulders of these these young rookies as, as humanly possible to make them feel as comfortable as possible all right speaking of projects I think this one everyone around the world agrees on is global esports I'm really hopeful for them in the future because they've shown a lot of promise here so I think that as time continues to go on you build up those synergies they could be a, a very scary team that's contending for the top four and I've heard from a lot of different teams Ooh, across a word, lot of different word regions, on the street word on the street right. is 
is GE is pretty damn good. Like, yeah. they're okay. really good. There's... And this is like a lot, I've heard this now from multiple different regions, multiple mm -hmm. different teams, that they are really good when you play against them, like, offline. Okay, so I, I got the team I really want to talk about. Okay. There were some big roster changes that were just announced with this team. Gen G. Uh, uh, I, first of all, I was excited about this team even before the roster changes. But yeah. now with Sylvan and God Dead coming in, Sylvan in particular, I am super excited about. I think he's the second best controller in Korea behind Mako. Um, just an unbelievable talent. He's so clutch. He's got a lot of those same kind of characteristics that some of the best controllers in the world have, where he's he's cagey, he's smart, and he's also reliable as a guy who you can have as not just a side anchor, but who can come in and win you rounds when things look bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so I'm really excited about this. I was already excited about them. I think TS is doing a wonderful job uh, shot calling with this team. Bale's a great coach. Uh, Meteor, of course, we know he's a known quantity as a, a duelist, a very, very talented player. Uh, I think this team is going to surprise. I'm really, really looking forward to them playing this I, year. I mean, one of the things that I wanted to see the most from Gen G at lock-in was how King was going to perform. Because oh, we yeah. saw mm. some we saw some ups and downs from him when he was playing on Onslayers, yeah. and it was just like, yeah, okay, yeah. has he not really found the groove? Now here, I mean, granted, we only got to see them play one one series yeah, versus only Loud, one series. but it was also an incredible matchup. Yes, and they're able to push Loud in ways that we had never really anticipated. Uh, and King was a really big part of, of that. His, his Viper that he was playing on Pearl was just nasty, and it's good to see that King is back to just kind of being the the, the king of side anchors. Mm -hmm. I think with with Bile there being the coach, this is going to be a team that you have to watch out for that could definitely be challenging for the crown. Uh, in the Pacific League, so I mean, I definitely have my my eyes trained on these guys. DRX, um, did they perform better, worse, or exactly as you thought they would? I would say slightly worse. Slightly worse. Slightly worse. Slightly worse. Okay. Slightly worse. Um, I thought they get to the finals. I thought they were pretty favorites to make it to the finals, if not win the whole thing. Granted, it, you know, Fnatic looked terrifying. So if they had gone up against them, who yeah. knows how the hell that goes? But there was definitely a lot of shakiness. Uh, from them that I kind of didn't really anticipate, given that they have played in front of a, a, lot, a large crowd at this point. So I thought that they would be able to deal with that a little bit better, but we did see a decent amount of inconsistency from them. Again, that, that really slow start to the series, yeah. having to be in a position to reverse sweep again, much like we saw from them versus Optic, it's really rough. They need to be able to have stronger starts to these sets rather than being put in the position consistently. Now the good news is, is that with the kind of combining of all these teams from all these different areas in Asia into one, you know, kind of unit, it's going to force DRX to be better, right? Yep. This is this is going to mm -hmm. be the best challenge that DRX has had, and it is going to make them be better. Because we know the talent's there. We've seen it. We know that this team has maybe the five best players in, in Pacific right now mm -hmm. uh, in almost every role that they play. Potentially potentially the best controller in the world? Easily people, the best yeah. controller in the world. People Hands down. down. Hands down. That? Yeah. Hands down. I'll, 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 yeah. Yep. Mako's best controller in the world. Period. Okay. All right, another team I know you like to talk about, Clinton, yeah. is uh, the Boomer team, right? <laughs> team Secret. Listen, they say it themselves, all right? I'm oh, not this ashamed. Is... I mean, it's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we get along, like yeah. especially Jesse and, and Dubstep. Like he and I get along really well because we're all over the age of thirty. Yeah. But uh, I love these guys; they're super nice guys. And you know they haven't been great last year. If we're just being perfectly honest, it was not the year they wanted no. last year at all. No. And uh, this, I did not have high expectations for them. And it's not uh, to do with anything that you know in terms of who they are as players or anything like. It's just the results from last year weren't good. Yeah. And so this year. I was like, well, I don't know. Let's see what they do. And they came in, they look great, especially Jesse Bash. Like, he looks rejuvenated. He's yeah. incredible. Yeah. yeah. And he's calling as well. So, I yeah. mean, uh, at lock in just in general, a lot of these IGLs seem to have upgraded overall in both their calling and their aim. But I was I was impressed with Jesse as well. Yeah, I think a lot of things with Jesse really impressed me. Not just, like, he's obviously been an IGL for a while for the team. He's been a, a multi-esport pro across tons of different yeah, esports. Like, he is, he is the absolute esport journeyman. But beyond that, he's the oldest player on the team. And now he's leading by example. This is what I think is really important for Secret and what gives me a lot of confidence for Secret this year is that Jesse's leading by example. He's coming out there mm. and he's not only calling good games, but he's playing out of his mind. His aim is improved. He's clearly putting in the work and the time behind the scenes. And he looks really, really good this year. So I think that's great for all the young players they're bringing in and kind of the future of Team Secret as they go on uh, in the future of the VCT. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about T1, another team that only got to play one series. There's, there's a Two things that I really took away from their series. One was that Furio were way better than I had Well, yes, Furio was very uh, good. They, and, I mean, ending up, ending up taking that, uh, what, Fnatic into overtime yes. in the next series as well on Haven was a really good showing from Furio. <laughs>
Second thing that I learned, Carpe, very good. Very damn good at playing this game. His mm -hmm. aim is looking crisp. He was all, the biggest question mark going into this tournament about how he was gonna perform. He showed up in this event and it looked like he was the only player on T1 that showed up at this event. He mm -hmm. was absolutely the best player that they had in that lobby, which is surprising to say, considering that you have so many career well, Valorant ask. players now in Zeta and Munchkin. Yeah, mm -hmm. if all of these gears start clicking together for T1, this could be a very scary team, could be second or third best team in the Pacific region, I think. Because, you know, we've seen what Saya player is capable of when he was on the guard. We've sure. seen what all these players have been capable of on different teams. Now it's just getting all the, you know, like I said, all the gears clicking together so that it yeah. functions as one engine and they can all roll with it. The way you put it, I, I do agree with that, right? Where the biggest question mark has now become a solid foundation. And so the other known quantities, they just have to kind of get back into the groove and hopefully they can perform. Obviously, a lot of people, there's still hype around them just because of not just the brand, but the player names like sure. Sia, like Munchkin. These guys have proven themselves before. So. so we just talked about Zeta. Zeta was on Cloud9. Cloud9, you know who they played against? Paper X. Let's talk about Paper X. Oh, okay. This is again a painful <sighs> tournament. This is the second yes. time now that we've kind of walked away expecting great things out of Paper X and they've been, they've been falling flat. Mm. They need to actually play more standard Valorant, is what I'm starting to, mm. to kind of realize here. Because they continue to show some really neat Pick ideas. The walls on Lotus to be able to go ahead and get sure. that quick pick, taking down the Neon and everything. Those were neat, but then they're just so all over the place. I need to see more structure, because we know what they're capable of. Yeah. And I, I, I desperately want to see them get back into that. Structure. And I think this, is, this is, gives us a good segue into another team that has a similar story arc, right? Zeta. Oh, I want to talk about the most important thing, which was actually Benkai's walkout. I was so. I was gonna do it too. <laughs> you shut the hell up. For a <laughs> yeah, how dare you skip the actual? Core yeah, the most. Of the show, I'm sorry. Yeah, which well, is him and Boaster how many have to costumes compete. does he bring? Does he bring just ten? I mean, um, I, what are they gonna look? Do you think he's gonna do walkouts every time? Probably. Even in Seoul, just every week, week after week. Yeah, no, I, I would love to. Have Come you guys on. ever guessed his walkout correctly? No. no. <laughs> Not even close. How are you gonna know what that, that what, guy, what he's I don't know about. what that guy's thinking any moment of the I mean, day. When, like he did, when he did the snail in yeah, the That is snail unbelievable. Was, that is just that was he also, impressive. He committed to it for so long. For a very long time. I thought he would give up and I was like, you know what? Yeah, if you're gonna do it, this is the way you do it. You do it all the way to the end. But now now we can talk about the boring things again, but we can talk about the actual game in the league again. Uh what you want yeah, to talk, talk about? <laughs> Well, I was going to say a team that had a similar story arc to Paper Rex, yes. right, where they played really well at one event last year. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the hype and the hopes for this region and this team were through the roof in that Zeta division, right? Like, yeah. I mean, a team that I was so enamored with, I was so happy for, like, to see uh, a Japanese esports team perform like this at that level. They're a team that... Uh, you know, has a lot of great personalities. You can see how much they care. I mean, you see Laz, you know, getting so emotional after so many of their games and things like that. Uh, they, they they looked like they just hit this amazing groove and they were going to be the the banner carriers for Japanese esports going mm. forward. Since then, though, it's kind of fallen apart. They just haven't looked like the same team since uh, since Reykjavik last year. I, th I think that this has been a pretty big hit to some of the, the shifts that they made in, in who's playing what and as well as the, the meta right now because with Chamber out, it's just it's that, so that many teams scrambling. Yeah. yeah, so many teams scrambling to figure out, you know, what are we going to do? Laz had been that guy for for most people who are paying attention. Like Laz has been the one that that has really taken that team by you know take the world by storm on that team that was able to give them that deep run. He needs to be able to find his groove and, and get comfortable as well. If he's not feeling comfortable, if he's not thriving, then I feel like the whole system is going to suffer. Yeah, for Zeta, I think it just they just need to have that confidence and that faith in each other. I think it's just going to take a little bit more time. But so, it's, it's another team where it's like we, the, the talent is known. It is yeah. there. We can see it. We have seen it. Just we need to have the stars align once again. Yeah. We need to find the players, find their groove, and then they can make it. Because, I mean, just imagine Masters Tokyo, Zeta's there. They make in the, the top oh, three. It'll be dude. It'll yeah. They're there. That would be one of the most electric crowds. I mean, you want to talk crazy. about Brazil with loud performing. I, Which I is think also that, very crazy to see, just the support and the I think Japan with, with Zeta there would be even more electrifying. Uh, now, uh, everyone's favorite thing about eSports, let's do some spicy takes. Uh, for me, Clinton, you might have already had one, calling T1 getting top four within 23. <laughs> do, you, do you agree that that's a hot take? He said potentially second as well. well oh, did you uh, see that? I, no, I said top three. I said third. I, I think I put the highest. Roll the, the okay, table. Wait, no, okay. <laughs> Maybe I did that. But I think, I think, third, I think third is doable for them at do their peak. Do you think that's pretty at their hot? Peak. 
at their peak. If there was like a spicy level of one to 10, I'd say that's like an eight. I that's think my hotter take is I think I think actually Gen G is gonna be second. Is that a hot take because they're getting second and not first, or is that a hot take because they're getting second and not I think lower? a lot of teams would place like Paper X or I don't know, maybe even Talon now with how they, well oh, they played a lock okay. ahead of them. I so see. I mean, I, that's what I'm hearing, you know, scuttlebutt on the street is, is a lot of people would say Paper Rex is the second team. I don't think so. I think Gen G is gonna be second. Well, then what's your hot take? I haven't heard anything spicy out of you yet. Uh, global top four. Okay. I think that Global Esports can make a top four run. Uh, I don't. Th I think breaking into the top three might be a little bit too difficult, but I think that over the course of this season, given what we what we saw, given the the caliber of player that they have, I think that they'll be able to make a, a run into the top four. You know what? I think Sugar Zero might be able to prove himself as like a top IGL within Pacific uh, by the end of the season. It's going to take some time, and and if that happens, that should hopefully translate to Zeta Division getting to Masters, and then we'll be able to see them on our inter international stage again. So that's that's what I'm going to put. I'm going to put my hopes in Sugar Zero. I think it's definitely possible. I think that he is that caliber player that can make it happen. We just have to see it in practice. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about our first week matchups. Obviously, every team's going to play each other at least once, but we're going to open with some big matches. And I think, as everyone would have wanted to, the very first opening match is going to be DRX versus Zeta. DRX and Zeta, they both had some high rankings last year. Predictions? But, no. DRX. DRX. It's going to be DRX. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, just given the consistency from DRX, they continue to place incredibly well at every event that they go sure. to. You know, I think that if Zeta comes out and they can beat DRX, well, yeah, oh my god, god. Well, yeah, that would that would be yeah. one of the biggest upsets that we've seen in a very very long time. Uh, but then the very second match, I believe, on the opening day, this should be a fun one because it's going to be a battle of two Korean jets that haven't had a chance to play against each other. It's Global Esports versus T1. Man, this is really tough to yeah, call. Yeah, this for one's me. a tough one. I, I, I think. GE is a little bit better pound for pound overall right now, but okay. that can change really quickly either way. Uh, and then on day two, we're gonna have Paper Rex coming in. They're playing as Destination Focus Me. Both teams that I think now need to prove themselves again after their performances of lock-in. Who's winning this one? I think it's gotta be Paper Rex, just, just given the, the, the history of the team, given that they've stayed together. It's still the same five-man core. DFM, there's a lot of improvement I think that needs to happen. Uh, so if they do beat Paper Rex, be an insane upset. Yeah, Paper X. I go with Paper X. But I yeah. think it'll be I think decently close, I think. Okay. Uh, and then it's going to be the uh, two of the Southeast Asian teams going up against each other. It's going to be Talon versus Team Secret. This one, I think a lot of people will favor Talon, and I I'm going to take the safe route. I think Talon's winning this one, but I think probably a close match. Yeah. I think Team Secret. I'm going to go with Team Secret. Okay. I think I I'm a little bit, like... Uh, kind of riding the hopium, I guess, with Team yeah, Secret. Sure. I'd favor Talon here, just given that they were able to push, uh, push DRX a little bit yeah. harder, and I think that Secret, again, they need to show us a little bit more, considering that Liquid looked very out of sorts. And there. then on day three, the last day of week one, it's going to the two teams that haven't played a match yet, uh, coming into Pacific, it's Genji versus RQ, and I'll go ahead and say, I do think RQ is gonna put up a strong fight. Genji probably still wins, but I think RQ is gonna shock a lot of people swinging out the gate right off the bat. I think they definitely can, and I think that they put up a slightly stronger performance, especially in the, the, their second map at, at lock-in. So clearly, with the veteran presence on this team, there's a lot of hope for them to be able to do well. It's mm -hmm. more about how well can they build up and guide these three rookie players that they have. I agree. I think that there's potential for them to make this competitive, but I would have to go with Genji. Just before we wrap up, I mean, how do you think Pacific's going to do overall, not just at Masters, but by Champions? you think Pacific's really going to continue to prove to everyone that this might be the strongest region? This is our I'm, year. I'm on record saying this, that I this think is DRX is going to be in the finals at Champions this year. It's an inevitability. Yeah, yeah, yeah DRX is going to be the finals, but then it's going to be another Pacific team, and they're going to win. See, That's that would be the, the best. That would be the absolute like prime timeline right there. I mean, that'd man. be crazy. Whichever it's, team wins. Right? It's yeah, going yeah. to be DRX versus Sentinels in Los Angeles, <laughs> and everyone's going to be there wearing their Sentinels jerseys. Go, ah, yeah, Koreatown's going man, crazy in LA. Just gonna, he's just gonna just dash and blade storm all over their faces, and it's just gonna be a slaughter. I mean, again, it'd be great to see not just yours, but any Pacific team uh, in a finals. That's the next step, right? We've seen Pacific teams get third place you know, countless times now. Uh, so to see them in the finals and actually win, right, and, and getting to the finals a second time would be absolutely uh, thrilling, I think, for the entire region and all the teams involved. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah, thanks so much for having us here. Uh, for everyone watching, don't forget to tune in. We're going to kick off VCT Pacific on March 25th, and then we're live every weekend until we finish the top three who will be going to Masters Tokyo. We'll see you there.